Hello there, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and this is Pop OS 21.04, the, the beta version. I got tired of waiting, and so I just chucked the beta on my laptop to play around with it. And I wanted to take this opportunity to run through some of the distinguishing features of Pop OS 21.04, at least of the beta. Bear in mind, of course, that this is a beta, so everything is subject to change, and I'm not going to be harping too much on any little bugs that I've discovered because it is a beta. If those bugs make it into the release, then you'll hear about them again. I mostly just want to talk about the general features and so, sort of my thoughts about the direction that System76 is taking with the Cosmic Desktop. So, first things first, it is no. Make no mistake. It is GNOME. It is more than just extensions. If you disable, if you explicitly disable every single GNOME extension, and then refresh GNOME, reboot the computer, whatever, there are still cosmic tweaks that are at play. So it is more than just a bog standard GNOME extension, but it is effectively GNOME with some third-party modifications applied. So bear that in mind. And it is also not GNOME 40. We are still running GNOME 3.38.5. It is my understanding that in the next Pop! OS release, that would be 21.10, they're anticipating moving to GNOME 40. But we're not in GNOME 40. So what are some of these mystical, magical tweaks? Well, first things first, is you will notice that there is no activities button up here. Instead, what we have are two separate buttons. We have workspaces and we have applications. The thing about GNOME is that it has effectively two views, right? You have the desktop view and you have the activities view. And into this activities view are merged together in one thing, your workspaces and an application switcher, your full list of installed applications on the system, and effectively your, your dock, your favorited applications. They're all merged together in one screen. Oh, and the, and the application launcher is embedded in there as well. Uh, so what System76 has done with Cosmic is they've actually taken that one monolithic screen and split it out into a couple of options. So if we have our workspaces option right here, which explicitly brings up just the workspace switcher and your running applications on each workspace, and nothing else. And then you have the Applications button, which brings up the application list, as well as the application launcher, which works the same as it always has. Now, the other thing that they've done is they have actually changed some of the key bindings around a little bit. You may recall from Pop Shell, if you're familiar with that, that System 76's um, tiling window manager add-on, which is all here as well as part of Cosmic, uh, the launcher, which you could access with uh, super and slash, and it brings up effectively this launcher where you can type in the name of an application and it will allow you to launch it, and you can do searches, you can run shell commands, you can do calculations, you know, just do a quick little calculation from here. It's a very handy, um, it's a very handy launcher. Uh, the thing is, I almost never used it because in GNOME, if you simply strike the super key without the slash, that brings up effectively the same thing. It doesn't have the calculator functionality and stuff, but if your goal is strike key, type program, run program, you could far more easily accomplish that in stock GNOME by just striking the Windows key, opening up your activities panel. So what System76 have done here is they have actually gone ahead and said, no, we're going to make the super key bring up our launcher. And that's what it does. So now it doesn't bring up that big activities panel with the workspaces and everything anymore. It simply brings up their launcher. And you can use this to select a currently running application. So for example, if I pop up a couple terminals, and a file explorer. Now, I have the option to select between them. You can see there's a couple different ways to do this. You can just click on it. Uh, you can use the arrow keys, or you can hold down Control and use J, J and K. And when you do a when you search apps, for example, 
if I do a search for Kitty, you'll see that what, ha what it finds is it finds my two currently running windows. Now this does lead to a slight annoyance that I find, which is if you look, this little gear is the application launch thing here. And so if we take a look at this, it's actually stacking the existing applications on top. If I wanted to launch another terminal emulator, if I did Windows key or super key type kitty, hit enter, that's going to default to selecting one of them, not launching a new one. So if I wanted to launch a new one, I would have to type kitty and then manually go down to the bottom and launch a new one, which is a bit annoying, but is what it is. Um, I, I do have one significant concern about this application launcher though, which is there is a delay between when you strike the launcher key and when it will start actually registering what you type. So for example, if I were to strike the launcher and immediately start trying to launch Vivaldi, watch what happens. Notice I typed VIV and it missed my first keystroke because I, I, I typed the V too quickly and it didn't, it wasn't loaded up in time. This does not happen on stock GNOME with the stock Windows Launching Activities panel. I have tried to make stock GNOME do this where it skips key presses. I have not managed. So this is a significant annoyance and I do hope that this is simply a result of the beta and something that will be fixed later. One other thing you need to know is because now the Windows key simply does this, it means that you that the you, you need a new key binding to access the workspaces in the applications panels. So those key pre bindings are if you hold down the Windows key and strike A, that brings up your application launcher, should you ever want it. And if you hold down Windows and strike D, that will bring up your workspace panel like this. So Windows A, probably useless. If you're using GNOME, you probably aren't using the application launcher like this. It's kind of unless you're on a tablet or something. Um, there's no, I can't think of a good reason to be using a mouse to launch applications on GNOME. It's just not set up for that. That's not what it's designed to do. Um, and it gets a lot of hate for that, but let's be honest, it's not designed for mouse interactions, really. It's a keyboard. It, it's like i3. If you come into this expecting to use a mouse and get leg legitimate work done, you're gonna be annoyed. And you see that even in GNOME 40, where there's all kinds of like, oh, well, we got to click here and then roll down here with the mouse to get to the dock and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, speaking of docks, Cosmic actually has a dock that ships with it. It's just the, the Ubuntu dock extension. I have it disabled right now because I don't see a point, but a lot of people do. And so there is a dock that ships with Pop! OS standard now. One thing that's a little bit annoying is I have the dock disabled, and yet... If I lock my screen, sign back in again, you'll see the dock shows up there. And if I actually have windows open, and I don't know if, um, if I have a full screen window like this, and I don't know if OBS is actually picking this up. See how it has to resize the, it resizes the window to accommodate the dock, hides the dock, and then resizes the window again. Really minor gripe, only happens when you unlock it, but that is something that I hope gets resolved in the release version as well. And really, as far as Cosmic goes, uh, that's kind of it that I've, at least that's mattered and influenced me. I've poked around a little bit. Uh, there's some extra stuff going on in the settings panel that's pertaining to Cosmic. Some of it's not actually running yet. Um, but there is a, here under desktop, is where they have put most of the Cosmic specific configuration options. And so you can see, you can enable a hot corner, which is currently marked as to do, so I assume that it doesn't work. Uh, you, can, you can actually hide these buttons if you want. I'm tempted to hide them both, although that does make that look kind of wonky. I'll have to play around with that. Uh, one thing that's neat is you can actually very easily specify where the top bar goes, primary or all displays. And you can also change where the date and time is located as well. 
So just more customizability, which is nice because that's never been GNOME's strong point. And you also have right in here in settings, the maximize and minimize buttons, um, which personally I don't use. Um, I just have it set up so that a double click um, on the title bar <coughs> or, uh, maximizes and a middle click minimizes. And that's what I do. You can set that up in GNOME tweaks. As far as the dock configuration goes, you can turn it on and off. That's what it looks like, um, if you care. Uh, you can configure where the dock shows up, auto hide it, and all of that stuff. Um, I saw one review of this where the reviewer was complaining about the fact that when the dock is up, it doesn't auto hide. It's a setting. It's it's a toggle right there. You can you can make it auto hide if you want to. I'm assuming that it works. Yeah. So, like, that's a setting, so don't listen to anyone who says that. Um, you can configure that. And then there's some workspace settings in here as well. So you can, again, a lot of these settings here are settings that were already available in standard GNOME if you installed GNOME tweaks. But it's nice that System76 is trying to move away from that paradigm and integrate more useful settings in the GNOME settings, uh, GNOME settings panel. Now, things that I don't see that I, I wish were here. This is listed on System 76's uh, roadmap for Pop OS, but it, I, it still has not actually made it. Is one major limitation of the built-in um, calendar, contacts, Geary, and GNOME online accounts system that we use in Pop OS is that there's no way to configure CalDAV and CardDAV on those applications. You can use it. The, all the backend infrastructure exists, and Geary and Calendar and Contacts can use... Well, I guess Geary uses email, but Calendar and Contacts can use CalDAV and CardDAV calendars if you configure them in the backend, but there's no way in the online accounts panel or in the applications to do that. So what you end up having to do, and I have a video about this, so I'll link a card up on how to do this, is you, you have to install Evolution, set everything up in Evolution, and then you can uninstall Evolution. And it's asinine. I keep hoping to see a CalDAV and a CardDAV option here, um, and it, it has yet to arrive. This is one of those things where it annoys me when it comes up, to the point where I have been very close to just downloading the code and trying to figure out how to hack it in myself. But it comes up so infrequently that I very quickly cool down and then move on to other things and, and forget about my aspirations to <laughs> contribute to GNOME. <laughs> it's one of those things where the entire backend infrastructure exists. I, I, I can only imagine it would just be adding a setting here and then linking, linking the core... The corresponding pop-up page back to the back end. It's one of those things where I can't imagine it would take all that long to do, but I don't know about the how the code is set up for this, so it, it could actually be quite difficult. Again, let me reiterate, all of the infrastructure is there. These applications will work if they work as is on CalDAV and CardDAV. There's just no way to set it up on the back end without installing something else to do it. The only other thing that I can think of to show you is the notifications panel, which looks pretty much the way that it did in uh, 20.10. I don't know that they made any significant changes to it, but it is the nice convenient one. If, if you're still running 21 or 20.04, um, the biggest change for me, from 20.04 to 21.10, was getting all this calendar stuff out of the notifications panel and off here in the side, so it doesn't look like a notification anymore. Um, I really appreciated that change. Incidentally, I'm actually still running 20.04 on my main computer. Um, I had sufficient issues with uh, 20.10 that I just rolled it back. Depending on how this goes, I may install 21.10. 04 on my computer. I'm hoping I can, uh, but we'll see what state it's in before I I do that. I find that as I get older, I find bleeding edge stuff much less appealing, and I just want a, a stable platform that works. 
<laughs> I never thought years ago. I never never thought I'd see the day where I was legitimately sitting on a at this point over a year old long term support release of an operating system. <laughs> Just explicitly for the fact that it's long-term support and relatively stable. Well, not relatively stable. It's stable as a rock. 20.04 is incredibly stable. I've had no problems with it. Pop OS, that is. 20.04. I don't know that there's a whole hell of a lot more to say. So that's just a quick look at Cosmic. It's some pretty incremental changes. But it is it is nice to see this... Just this differentiation up here between workspaces and applications and the launcher. I just hope that they get the response time of this thing good enough that I, it doesn't drop keystrokes if you type too quick. Because I, I, I mean, I can train myself to do it, to just wait a second. It's not hard, but it is kind of annoying and I would prefer not to have to work around my desktop environment if at all possible. So that's about it. I hope that you found this interesting. I will have a more thorough video when the stable release of this operating system launches. It's supposed to launch in June. We're getting towards the end of June, so we'll we'll see how that turns out. I don't want to spend too much time digging into all the intricate details of this thing when stuff is still subject to change. So let me know what you think. I think Cosmic's pretty cool. It's not groundbreaking when i first saw it i got really really excited um and then i very quickly calmed down and realized you know it's really not that big of a difference um this is nice but yeah so that's the beta version of pop os 21.04 i hope that you found this video interesting and i'll see you in the next one